All right, one of the things in this job is that you, you are flexible as well. So uh, co-host, if I may uh, seek your indulgence by exercising the flexibility by inviting, firstly, the Secretary for the Department of Higher Education Research Science and Technology, uh, Professor Father Jan Zuba, and following him, uh, the Secretary for Planning, Connie Samuel, uh, Father Zuba will speak on some of the things that uh, his department and the sector is leading out in terms of supporting the tertiary education sector. Father Zuba. Thank you. Dear Prime Minister, States Ministers, Secretary, College Secretary, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, Professors, Deans, Students, Representative Council, and Students' Body. I am invited to say a few words about the higher education sector, and uh, I'm glad to do it. But before I do it, I would like us to do a small exercise for all of us. Can you raise your right thumb or hand, please? And put over your eyes, close your eyes, everyone. Hey, everyone, everyone, no shortcuts, everyone. Now, what did you see when you put your palm? Did you see something? Or? No, you can remove. So, why I ask you to make this small exercise? Because this small palm, you put over your eyes, closed your view, isn't it? You couldn't see anything. And that's what happened with us human beings. When we sometimes face some challenges in life, they blocked our intellect, we cannot see what is around us. We only focus on the small problem. And I am grateful that I was allowed to say a few words. Students and uh, staff of UPNG, I refer you to the press statement made in today's newspaper, both newspapers, national and postcular, by our minister for higher education recent science, technology, and sport. I was reading his press statement, and I was really inspired. Because like the small, small palm you put over your eyes, block your views, sometimes the problems we face do the same with our intellect. Our minister made a clear statement in 1975, 49 years ago, we had only few Papua New Guineans with bachelor's degree, very few. Since that time, we as a nation make a huge progress. Professor Cecilia Nembo is your vice chancellor of Papua New Guinea. We have doctors, we have nurses, we have lawyers. In all the professions, we have Papua New Guineans and our minister rightly pointed out that's how you measure progress of development of any nation. How many people are educated at what kind of responsibilities and tasks they make. And other thing I would like to say, which quite often we don't say, when Honorable James Marape became the Prime Minister and uh, Honorable Pela Ninige was uh, our Minister for Higher Education, we had 54 providers registered higher education institutions, 54. Since that time, we improved the rate to 65 higher education institutions, which are registered with 73 campuses. From short period of time, from 54, we went to 65 institutions with 73 campuses. Add to this, 37 institutions are in the process of going through an independent institutional and academic audit. So if they conclude the audit successfully, we are talking about 110 institutions of higher learning in our country. So this is a huge development and progress, which quite often we don't see. We have eight universities, national, and one from overseas, Southern Cross University. This makes nine universities operating in our country. We have 18 
business and technical colleges, 12 nursing colleges, 16 teachers colleges, 14 specialized institutions of higher learning. So, the Prime Minister, thank you for supporting us. Um, indeed, the reform it was started by Honorable Pilaniningi is obvious. From 54, we went to 65 plus 73 campuses. I tell you one experience which living in our country since 85. I will never forget, it was uh, December 28th. Honorable James Marape, Prime Minister, called me and my previous minister, Nick Kuman, and he said, I want every citizen who finished grade 12 to go to higher education, either university or college. And uh, fees should be not obstacle. It was 28th of uh, December. I want you to start the higher education loan program. And in four months, we establish the HELP program. This is the commitment our Prime Minister made to, our, to your education. So you as a student at the university, you are eligible to 10,000 kina per year, undergraduate. But our Prime Minister didn't stop here. He gave us directives. I want to offer help for master's degree and PhD students. First time in our history of our country, government committed funds for postgraduate, master's and PhD. Thank you, Prime Minister. <clears throat> in January of this year, I'll just give you some example. Chief Secretary called me and said, oh, Prime Minister, I want to see you. So I went to see the Prime Minister and he said to me, what's the situation in January, January this year? What's the situation with uh, funding for higher education? Oh, I said, still we own 31 million kina in Texas for students for 2023. And this year budget is 82. He said, you will get it on Monday. And that was Friday. And end of January this year, we got it all the money. So we paid all the outstanding fees for last year. And in January of this year, we got it 83 million for Texas. So every one of you who meet the criteria for Texas, and if the university submits that with us on time, will receive Texas support. On top of that, each one of you, my dear students, is eligible for higher education loan program funding for undergraduate and postgraduate. I must say, if a broken heart, I look at the statistics, 66 students from the University of Papua New Guinea took this advantage of applying for help. 4,500 students enrolled, only 66 applied. My dear students, it doesn't matter what kind of government you will have, or governing council, or vice chancellor. We only can provide for you the environment in which you can grow and develop. But we cannot force you to be successful. Why are you not taking advantage of help? Everyone sitting here in front of you never had this opportunity that the government give them help money. You are the lucky ones. And thanks to Honorable James Marapa, our Prime Minister. So I, I don't understand that paradigm. And maybe when I will be retiring, I will have to study to understand why you have such a great opportunity you are not taking advantage of. Our Prime Minister tasked our Minister, Honorable Paul, to develop a five-year strategic plan. Within five years, we should have enough spaces across higher education sector to enroll 30,000 students. Our minister developed that plan and uh, we will sub it will submit to our prime minister. On top of that, when the uh, Honorable Minister of Higher Education, Recent Science, Technology and Sport took office, the second day of his administration, he called for the meeting of presidents, vice chancellors, and directors of research institutions. Today's workshop 
and he said we have to help the young people to get quality of education and af after the workshop he launched very important uh, policies which he published in newspapers as well so i am sure you read those policies which are for you to help you to get dual degrees university of papua new guinea and university with which this university has memorandum of cooperation that was a great initiative by our current minister and some of the universities in our country already in process of organizing such a dual degree but you will start at the university of papua new guinea one or two years another two years you finish in overseas universities this will expose you to different cultures and give you dual degree from your university and the other universities so i would just say something about the directives we received from our prime minister to extend the higher education sector is not only to enroll more students but to improve the quality of learning research and teaching to ensure that our curriculum, curriculum across all higher education institutions are matching international standards that you'll be once you graduate that you'll be able to secure job or create job in our country or find job on international market so the students this plan is developed and as directed by our prime minister and we will uh, present to other ministers and nrc for further debate in concluding remarks i would like to echo the words of uh, chief secretary that we congratulate you for your mature approach that you invited our prime minister to present his perfect perspective his views on our economy and other social issues however our minister for higher education this is science technology and sport and i we would expect from a university students which you are the elite of our society present issue and present solution we will welcome your solutions to current existing issues because you might see things differently than us and my dear students in the future try to exercise your brain you have the brain and all of you will get together you might be able to suggest solutions which we don't know or maybe we don't think about that so the whole idea about dialogue is to contribute so you present your concerns to our prime minister but it will be nice if you could present solutions which you think are good and our government could conclude and use them to address the concerns we all have in our country as i mentioned to you the small palm you put over your eyes make you blind you couldn't see there is a greek word stokoma intellectual blindness that problems comes and make us blind we are not able to see the solutions so but problem comes and go we stay therefore we should be always positive and uh, see how many good things are happening in our country i would like to take the advantage in, in the concluding remarks to congratulate our minister for justice attorney general on may 2024 we have passed from parliament was formally registered arbitration international act and arbitration domestic act and these two acts spread like fire overseas because they will they are giving confidence to our investors to those who like to come to our country and participate in economic and social development these two acts make huge difference and i would like to congratulate prime minister you and your minister for launching this arbitration act which really motivated the business overseas to come and with confidence invest in our country so thank you so much for giving me the time to speak and to highlight only a few developments which took place in our country but students please take advantage 
of the HELP program. This is for you. And our Prime Minister launched that program just to help you. So make good use of that. Thank you.